Hey, welcome back. The Bone Crusher got shortchanged. He got stuck listening to a lecture about carburetors and didn't really get to enjoy his new bike. But I'll just say this. Uh, generally, on a new carburetor, a new carburetor, the rubber tip is not going to get hard. <laughs> We're not talking about a 36-year-old carburetor. We're talking about maybe a three-month-old carburetor. And then number two, if you need a bigger idle jet in the carburetor, uh, you've got some other problem wrong with your bike. But I'll send a bigger idle jet and take care of that carb problem. And we'll go from there. But anyhow, uh, I was out here working on uh, the variator. And uh, of my three Urban Expresses, two of which I put that carburetor on and it's worked just perfectly fine uh, without any adjustment to the idle jet. Uh, but of my three Urban Expresses, uh, this is the only one where the gears are not messed up. And how can I tell that the gears are not messed up on this? It's because when I take the cover off, they don't fall out all over the place. They stay in their spot, and that's how it should be. And if your gears don't stay in their spot, it could be because they're worn. It could be because you're missing washers uh, and bushings that are supposed to be here, and they're not. It uh, could be uh, this uh, stopper here, this rubber stopper. It's kind of like a ramp. That wears down over time, and... Uh, if it holds this gear in place and if this rubber wears down over time this gear is too far back and if it's too far back it won't mesh up with this gear right and uh, that's why oftentimes when you pull off the cover the gears get loose or they pop out or whatever now when you pull off the cover make sure you hold this in and then ease the cover past it and then take the cover completely off so anyways um, I have uh, 27 plus 9 grams, are we on camera? I believe I have 27 plus 9 which is uh, 36 grams in the variator and I just put on a new GY6 scooter clutch with the yellow Contra spring and the yellow 1500 RPM springs and uh, I did my little trick with the stock belt. Oh, I took it off the pulley. The problem is with that yellow contra string, yellow contra spring on here, uh, uh, the cheeks of this pulley are, are pretty hard to pull back. So in pulling the belt off, I've created myself a little bit of a problem. But anyhow, what I've discovered with this stock belt is if you just invert it like this uh, you'll get the fat side rubbing uh, you know running on the pulleys instead of the thin side and you don't need these teeth or cogs in the belt uh, because uh, they don't even I don't even think they they touch the pulleys at all with the angle of the uh, angle of the pulleys and the angle of the belt so you can keep the same size belt, which is nice for acceleration, but the, the wider side is going to ride up higher uh, on this front pulley and thereby giving you more speed. And you don't suffer from the, the laggy, slow takeoff of the BX31, which is a longer belt. and It, it takes a minute for it to spin up and, and tighten up on the, uh, the pulleys here. So anyhow... Uh, I need to start writing down what I've got in these things. Um, let's just double check here. What you can do if you forget is you can compare them to the other weights. You probably can't see this. You can compare them to the other roller weights in terms of, uh, well that's even bigger. What did I pull out, the red? So if this is 10, the reds are, let's get the front of 
this thing. The reds are 12s. Yeah, that's what I thought. So 30. No, okay, I've got 36 plus 9. I got 45 grams in here. Now the question is, uh, let me see if I can show you. Oh. Everything's in the way. Uh, you can kind of see that yellow spring in there. Uh, well, I replaced the uh, stock contra spring with that. I replaced the stock clutch with a GY6 clutch. And on that GY6 clutch, I put on these yellow 1500 RPM springs. Maybe I should have gone for the red 2000 RPM springs. But since this was basically a stock bike, um, I made the decision to go with the yellow for better or for worse. So we've got 36 and 9. We've got 45 grams. And, um, you know, this side is providing more resistance than it originally was. And, of course, you know, the engine stayed the same. So the question is, and I don't have an answer for sure because I've heard two different answers. One is I could put more greater weight in this front variator to help overcome the tension of this spring. Or someone has said to put less weight in this variator, uh, which will allow this to spin up to a higher RPM uh, to also help overcome the uh, tension of this spring. So we have two opposite answers, but both seem right. I, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. So we, what did I say we had? We had 36 plus 9, 45 grams. I'm getting this on film, so at least I'll remember next time, right? If I don't remember, I can check the film. I'm going to take out these three, what I believe are three grammers here. I'm going to take out nine grams. Don't be lazy. Always put them back in the right spot. You'll save yourself a lot of headache later. I'm going to go lower. And if I'm wrong, well, shoot me. Well, if I'm wrong, I'll be taking it apart again. <laughs> I've gotten to the point where I can zip this thing apart and back together in no time. And then, so 36, I'm going to go from 45 to, should I go 45 to 39 or 45 to 36 inside the variator? What should I do? Should I drop 9 grams or should I drop 6 grams? Let's drop 9. I'm going to stay with the three 12 grammers for 36. Now remember, this is a stock bike, so... Uh, all the measurements you heard about kits that are, that are going to drive the engine at a higher RPM don't apply. You know, uh, everybody says, like, the magic number is 24 grams. Well, you know, that's if you've got a kit and a pipe and you're, you're running everything at, at a higher RPM. And we don't have that here. And... Uh, the idea of the different clutch is to basically um, require greater RPMs to get the bike started from a standstill so that it'll accelerate quicker. And if, if, if you have a different version of the story, you know, feel free to share it. If your version of the story is, well, uh, the rubber tip hardens on the float needle on a new carburetor, feel free to share it. Throw it out there. See if it floats. I don't know. The, uh, so 
So anyhow, if if you've taken uh, the cover off to like change the belt, and all of a sudden things started falling out, uh, it's because these gears have worn over time or you're missing someone else has been there before you and they didn't put everything back that happens all the time <laughs> it's happened 66.7 percent of the time for me and now uh, if you go to the manual and you know pull up the schematic and figure out what you're missing what's going on here uh, a lot of times you can find that stuff on eBay. I'm having some problem. There it goes. So I'm just putting the, uh, we'll call it the cover, back on the variator. I'm sure there's some more appropriate name for it. And I'm sure somebody will let me know. That's not called the cover, you big dummy. That's called the bottom. <laughs> Tighten up. What's going on? Am I going to have to take this apart? And so, what did I? I went with 36 grams. Remember that, Andy. 36 grams. You've got in the variator. So we went less. You know, my original. Oh, I see the problem. I got the wrong socket head. Oh, that's much better. Trying to tighten it with an 8 millimeter, and it's only a 7. But, you know, I get talking and, you know. But uh, while I'm messing with this, as you can see, I've started, or maybe you can see, maybe you can't, I've started to clean up this bike. And I'll mention that even if you have a new petcock or a new fuel filter, that doesn't guarantee that all dirt and crud is going to be uh, stopped. Because you know these fuel filters only filter to a certain amount of microns. And uh, you know, I forget if these are 15 microns or whatever up here. Uh, I bought fuel filters that filter to even a lower micron rating. So even if you've got a new petcock and a new fuel filter, it doesn't guarantee anything. It's kind of like, you know, a condom. They're not 100% effective. Okay. They're not going to keep everything from uh, getting through. But anyways, I digress. Okay, we got uh, got the variator. Let's see what's going on. Yep. I have to redo things. I got to talking, and one of the weights uh, jumped out on me. <laughs> I tell you, you can't win. You just can't win. If you're not paying attention all the time, little things like this will mess you up. So yeah, you know, that, that's probably one of the first rules of mopeds. If, it, if it's not going together easy, something's wrong, you know? So don't just try to jam it in there. That's like you know putting the slide in the carburetor. You know if it doesn't if it doesn't just ease on in there with barely touching the thing, you got it in wrong. Don't just try to jam it in there and then wonder why your bike won't start because basically the slide isn't going all the way down. You've got you've got the thing stuck at full throttle. I don't understand this carburetor's junk. My bike won't start.
All right. So keep it down like this where you're putting the cover on. Uh, you know, and you don't even need this. You know, once you've cleaned out all the grease, what's the point of this stupid o ring? You know, waste of time. See, Honda screwed up. They put grease in these things, and no grease was necessary. Grease probably just made it uh, variate, uh, either not variate all the way or variate more slowly. You know, make everything stick together or something. That O ring, what a nightmare. All right. So what was I saying? Oh yeah, this thing clean started to clean up really nice, and uh, I got like I said that new clutch in there, and I'm just trying to tune this variator to to play nicely with it. Oh yeah, there we go. And then I put new front brakes on. Oh, those are nice. No more squeaky squeaky, you know, when you're riding down, coming to a stop. It probably needs new rear brakes. Uh, and uh, what do we got here? Oh yeah. So how long is how long we've we been yapping on? Seventeen minutes. Yeah, I'm sure you're all thrilled to be listening to this. But you know, I started to clean up the chrome and stuff. Look at that. Oh, shield your eyes. That might hurt you. And I started to clean up the air box, those little side covers, the chrome on the front. Oh, yeah, look at that. That was just like a first pass, too. You know, we're just getting started. I got to do the, the frame. I did the seat, do the gas tank, clean it up nice. And what else? I took off that stupid shock extender. God, that was a dumb idea. Where'd I put that thing? So I put this uh, shock extender on, on the shock here. You can't see it, but it was on the top. And the problem is that is it pushed the tire. I wanted it to ride a little higher, which it did, but it pushed the tire down so that even when you're on the center stand, uh, the tire was still hitting the ground, which made it wobbly on the center stand. And it just didn't work out. I was like, yeah, all right, whatever. Tried and it, I tried, you know. That's how you learn. You try, if you make a mistake, you learn from it. So an even longer shock would cause the same problem. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, so if you're on ground that's not level, and that tire hitting the ground doesn't make it more stable. It actually makes it less stable. You know, you're at risk of the damn thing falling over. All right, well, anyways. So, hell. I've got to get it in just enough so I can stretch it over the, the bushing in the front here. God, God, that is, you know, the, the, the stock one's kind of hard, but not nearly like this. <sighs> stand, stand, you little turkey. And what you can do is once you get it in, I got it up. Yes. Now, you can kind of just jam it down, and then you, it'll give you some slack. What do you got on? What are we looking at? You got the whole thing in the frame. Beautiful. So, see, I haven't even had to mess with the gears because they just stayed right in place, which is how it should be. See, my first Urban Express, man, I dreaded taking this stupid thing apart because, you know, getting it back together was hell. I'd, I'd have to take me half a dozen times at least 
because uh, the gears were loose because they were missing washers and stuff and this they're worn and you know that's worn and no thanks man thank god i found one that was in good shape which is surprising because the uh odometer on this thing says it has like six thousand miles i don't know if i believe that Someone might have swapped out the speedometer with, with another one at one point. It's common. I've done it on bikes. So you can never trust that. It takes you five minutes to swap out a speedometer. You know, unless your idle jet's off. And, uh... The other thing... I discovered with this thinner belt is you can kind of uh, get that uh, this cheek to kind of just center up but even if it doesn't if you just get yourself a little slack yeah there it goes it centers up easier than with that BX31 belt and you don't need to go crazy tightening it yeah I should pull out the torque wrench and get the whatever 22 to 28 foot pounds whatever it is but uh, I should have filmed the clutch adventure so there we go so we dropped down to 36 you know still in my mind I think go heavier but we'll try 36 and see what happens And a little double check, the gears belt, yeah, it looks like we're all good here. Got to make sure that this uh, spring is, you know, under there, which it is. And then I need to tighten that down, that little seal there. And I can just kind of line it up maybe. Some bikes, the seal might be gone entirely. Okay, looking good. And I think I'm just going to run with four bolts because I might be taking this apart again. Some, somebody gave me that sage advice. You know, and I'm following it. I can take advice, yeah. No problem, bro. That was good advice. Just run four, brother. Four. Save yourself the headache. On, off, on, off, on, off. And I could get the drill out and, you know, spin them on, whatever. But look, is the drill, is the drill any faster than that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, what else have I done recently to this bike? Uh, like I said, cleaned it up. Started to, started to clean it up. Now, you don't tighten these on all the way at first. Just get them started. Put on your Kickstarter. How you want it. Okay. Uh, find my wrench. Get the wrench ready. You know, push this down just about that much. And then tighten it the rest of the way. Ugh. Don't have to King Kong it, you know. Just tighten it down as best you can one-handed. And one more. Now, if you keep some bolts out, you know, keep track of those because... That's how things get lost, is you take it apart and you don't put it all back together. And then, you know, next time, and then they're gone. That's what happened, you know, that's what happened to my other ones. Uh, this uh, little bolt that goes and holds the Kickstarter on should screw in real easy. If it's, if it's not, you're stripping something. You know, if it's not, take it off. 
and adjust where this sits because there's a groove in the middle of that spindle and uh, don't make the mistake of screwing all that up trying to like you know torque it in there because it's just not necessary there we go and you know you don't have to break this off tightening it either common mistake people want to just torque the hell out of stuff and then oh, I've got the uh, piston stop in so that's not going to go anywhere if I try to push the kickstarter down so yeah I've had that cover off on this thing dozens of times oh lord this is a learning experience But we're almost there, brother. We're almost there. All right, everything's back in order. I guess it's time to go for a little ride. All right. It always feels harder by hand than by foot. But, uh, hey, there you go. Let's, you know, we want to take a look, look around. I need a bigger garage. Got the Vermont plates on it for now. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I didn't paint that cover, but I painted the exhaust. Got some stickers going on there. Some At some point, battery acid leaked on that. Before I ever came across it, you know, I'll do what I can. Can't fix everybody's mistakes, you know? Look at that. Ooh, look at that seat. Oh, yeah. So, somebody, you know, got some overspray of spray spray paint on this. I don't know what the hell was going on, man. Don't know what the hell was going on. But, uh, it's a nice bike. Electric start. Um, there you have it. We're working on almost a half hour. I'm probably boring people to death. I'll get, you know, hate mail and letter bombs and complaints, you know. Edit your damn video, son. Edit the damn video. I'm falling asleep here. Holy cow. Hey, at least I moved the camera some, right? Alrighty. Ride safe.